Hello and welcome back to the Fantasy Guild. Episode number five of whatever you comment I will add into my fantasy world. On a quick note, I don't know if you've noticed, but we now have some new branding on the channel. We've got a new logo and a new banner and stuff. So yeah, we're, we're moving up in the world. We're becoming semi-professional. But without further ado, let's get into this episode. In this episode, we're going to be discussing gods, deities, and some unique items that are spread across this continent. So our first entry of today is from the Reddit user Eldritch Bad Touch. So Eldritch, thank you so much for your contribution to this world. Within this world, there is a god known as Voltair. And Voltair is the god of theater, commerce, and parties. Voltair is one of the few deities that interact with mortals on a semi-regular basis. They absolutely adore celebrations and is known to attend festivals that are amassing quite the crowd or have some of the fine delicacies or sometimes it is rumored they will show up unannounced to smaller more local gatherings if there is mead and meat and fruit available and when they decide to join the festivities it's known that Valtier would bring along amazing and rare gifts. Their followers believe that it is a great blessing and a rare honor if Valtier decides to show up. So across the continent, whenever parties or festivals are being planned and thrown in, there's a mass effort and awareness that goes into them so that they may have the chance that Valtier may make an appearance. So although every celebration may not be grand in numbers or in gold they are planned to be grand in spirit vast tables of grilled meats wine flowing like water theatrical performances they are all surely to delight Valtier also that they may make an appearance and bring a blessing and a gift but most importantly Valtier may bring pure delight to anyone that attends those festivities. So there we go, we have our first god in the world. Next up is from a Reddit user called Alien Andy. Andy, I loved this idea so much. I just think it's really mysterious and cool, so thank you so much. And without further ado, let's 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 get into it. There is a large community of things that we would know to be rust creatures who over centuries have carved out and created an underground dwelling. Through magic and evolution, they have learned to craft crude tools and carve away at this continent's crust so that they may go deeper and deeper below it. Even though they have existed for centuries, they still have not developed the ability to vocally communicate. Therefore, they don't have a language. But where did these rust creatures come from? Well, they are spawn of the Titan of the 13 metals. The Titan of the 13 metals is an ancient creature that dwells deep in this planet's core and its magical essence consists of 13 different metals that were fused together with magic and its life was born and from it the offspring of the rust creatures came. The rust creatures as they carve out new dwelling areas or tunnels closer to the surface are currently being led by a massive group of kobolds but they don't mind you see these rust creatures and kobolds actually have formed quite a symbiotic working relationship some might believe these rust creatures to be scary or that they might pose a threat but in fact when dealt with correctly they can be quite peaceful and their culture not that there is much of one, consists of collecting objects from the overworld. But this could all suddenly change when the Titan of the 13 Metals fully awakens. Because it isn't known how this Titan might respond to the current times. And the final contribution to this episode, episode number 5, is from a YouTube user called Gamer Dylan 6 Gamer Dylan, thank you so much for your comments under the videos. I've seen them every time and I really, really appreciate it. Dylan's idea was a bit of a strange one at first, but it's actually really growing on me. So spread far and wide across this continent, there are strange machines that have sat unmoving for millennia. These machines we would know to be mechs of a sort. How they're there, why they're there, well, we have no idea. No one knows who made them. A big mystery. They're just scattered around, lying dormant. Wherever they are stationed, they stand still like guardians. Silent, like stone, 
but always watching. They range in size and forms. No one in this world understands what they are. To people who keep an alert eye out for them as they travel across this realm, they are actually quite uncommon, with nearly none of their locations marked on any known maps. In terms of their appearance, think of a old, abandoned farming equipment. That is what most people in this world have grown to accept what these are. Hence, not a lot of attention is paid to them. In fact, most of them are now covered in moss, and in flowers and maybe a few small creatures have made their homes or nests upon their wide shoulders or on top of their head. You see the problem is they're far too old to be used or even operated and they can't even be properly scrapped. You see the material that they are built out of is an unknown metal but it's rarely if found in a singular piece is on the same level as mithril and even trying to consider to get one of these to move Never mind work properly, it would take mass amounts of magical power. And folks, that is it for episode 5, three new entries into the world. Thank you so much for everyone that is commenting. As I said last episode, don't worry, I've got a Word document with everyone's comments going into it, along with your names. And I will get round to literally putting every single one of them into a video for this series. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, peace.